Alright, so earlier I stated that you have direct variation as long as k is constant, that that ratio y over x always produces the same number for that equation, and k cannot equal zero. So for this equation, y over x should always produce four, and this equation, y over x should always produce negative four. We're gonna look at that in just a little bit. I'm gonna change pin colors. So first, I wanna actually show you another way of proving you have direct variation by either scaling up or down in your table for your equations. So let's just start easy. We'll start with one. We're gonna move from one to two. So how did we get from one to two mathematically? I'm gonna fix that arrow. So from one to two, well, you had to multiply by, you had to multiply by two here, and from the same spot over on the other side, for y, and fix that arrow again, you had to multiply uh, four times two to get to eight. So four times two will get you to eight. So you're scaling up by two, and I'm gonna change colors. So I could ask myself, well, how did I get from two to three? But I'm gonna just keep it simple. I'm just gonna ask myself, how did I get from one to three? Well, I had to scale up by three over here. So scale up by three. And how did I get from four to 12? Well, I had to scale up and fix that arrow again. All right, there we go. So from four to 12, well, I had to multiply by, multiply by three over on this side as well. So I'm scaling up by the same values, but what if we move in the opposite direction? To get from one to half of one, well, I had to scale down, or in fact, I wanna change that color. Well, I'm gonna scale down from one to one half. I would divide by two, uh, from four to two, I'd divide by two, but I'm gonna actually scale down all the way from one to one fourth, and I, what I'm really doing here is dividing one by four. So dividing, I'm scaling down, scaling down by four, dividing by four here. And on this other side, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna scale down by four and fix that arrow, boy. So, so four divided by four will get me to one. So dividing by four. All right, so let's see what happens over here in this equation. And don't make it too tricky. Don't, don't let it get too complicated. But how did we get from one to two? Well, you had to multiply times two. But notice here, as x increases, we said y decreases. As, as x is increasing, y is decreasing. But notice the scale's gonna be the same because how did I get from negative four to negative eight? I had to multiply by two. I have to multiply negative four times two to get to negative eight. So the scale's still the same. All right. From positive one over to three, the scale's still the same. We're still gonna multiply by three or scale up by three. And over here from negative four to negative 12, you're doing the same thing. You're gonna multiply by three and to move in the opposite direction. Uh, just I'm gonna look at from one to uh, one fourth and negative four to negative one there. All right, so for one to one fourth, you're scaling down, you're dividing by four. You're dividing by four. And negative four, divide by four, you're gonna get negative one. So we're still scaling down by the same value. So this is telling you, you have direct variation. All right, so I'm just gonna slide this information up a bit. And I wanna slide this information over some. And that should probably do it. Okay, so if you're trying to prove that your data set proves that you have direct variation, and let's pretend that maybe you don't know what K is, you could actually use this setup over here. You could take this setup and substitute points in for, for Y and X, to prove that you will constantly get the same number. The same number is consistent throughout for k. And if that's the case, then you have direct variation. If not, you won't. And we're gonna look at that more in later videos. I just wanna give you an intro to it right now. So uh, I'm gonna take this setup here, k equals y over x, and let's find out what k is equal to. k is equal to, in fact, I'm gonna lower that towards the bottom of the screen. k is equal to, and my setup, I'm gonna choose a value for y, so eight over its x value two here. So eight over two. So eight over two will give me a value of four. And let's just choose one more for fun. So k is equal to, in a y value, two, and let's actually put it over one half here. Let's see, um, so I, I put the wrong number, I put two, uh, eight again. So, so two this time, two, and over one half. So over one half. So I have division with a fraction. And the way to fix this, or the way to make it easier, is if you think about dividing fractions, it's easy as pie. Just flip that reciprocal, and then we're gonna multiply. That's a little song I like to sing with my uh, sixth graders. So we have 
2, 2 over 1 as a fraction. Remember, I'm flipping. I'm, in fact, fact, I'm going to just change colors. How did I get 2 over 1? Well, that's just this top value right here. And I'm going to erase that information. So let's go take this top value and write it as a fraction. 2 as a fraction is 2 over 1. And I'm actually going to multiply. And I'm going to flip this bottom information or flip the reciprocal here to uh, also make it 2 over 1. So I'm bringing it out. I am flipping the reciprocal of 1 half to 2 over 1. And then I'm just going to multiply straight through on top and on bottom. And now I'm going to get 4 on top and 1 on bottom, or simply 4. OK, so you'd probably want to use more than two data sets to prove that, that a k is always going to be equal to 4. But since we started with our equation knowing that k equals 4, I'm going to stop there. And let's actually just go to this other equation and do the same thing. So k, k is equal to, well, I'm going to start with negative 12. Let's do negative 12. That's my y value over my x value, 3 which will produce negative, uh, not negative, yeah, negative 4. So negative 4, negative 12 over 3 produces negative 4. And over here, let's just do one more number. k is equal to, and let's use 1 fourth this time. So uh, actually negative 1 is going to be my y value. And I want to just fix that information. So negative 1 over 1 fourth here. So 1 fourth is my fraction in the denominator. And I'm going to pull that out in just a second, and I'm going to multiply instead of divide. So I'm going to rewrite negative 1 first as a fraction. So negative 1 as a fraction is negative 1 over 1. And I'm going to multiply that by whatever's in the denominator. But I'm going to use that information in the denominator. And I'm going to fix that box just real quick. And I'm going to flip its reciprocal here. So instead of 1 fourth, I'm going to multiply by 4 over 1. So negative 1 times 4 is what we're dealing with. I want to change pen colors. All right, so negative 1 times 4 over here, negative 1 times 4 will give me negative 4. So I have negative 4. 1 times 1 will give me 1. So negative 4 over 1 is the same thing as simply negative 4. OK, so for both of these, I can see that k is equal to negative 4. And whenever I choose data sets from this table, I'm going to find that uh, my, my value for k is going to be negative 4. Therefore, I have direct variation.